Welcome to another midweek conversation with First Baptist Sweetwater, where we strive to be the first responders of God's love. I'm here in a warm space, Studio A, with my good friend Teak Hamilton. Teak, you look warm today. I am warm. <laughs> yeah, finally. Hey, we might as well go ahead and tell you that it's 40 degrees in the church office. Yes, it is. And so, and that's actually up a degree from this morning when we got here. <laughs> so it's warmed up in the office. <laughs> yes, it has. It's warmed up to 40 degrees. It might be us talking in there. Okay. Well, uh, I was thinking this morning as we were getting ready to uh, to join back up for this week's podcast that it all started about a week ago. Yes, it did. And sure enough, it got as bad or as we expected. Yeah. Anyways. Maybe a little worse. Yeah, probably. I don't think we're expecting well, all the stuff that's going on. Yeah, it's it's hard to it was hard to anticipate what this was actually going to do, uh, but uh, we've been fortunate here in mm-hmm. Sweetwater for yeah, sure. We've been very fortunate, so that's been good. So, but uh, well, here we are on the we Sunday. Just kind of had to divert and talk a little bit about mm-hmm. uh, what's coming up. But uh, those events or these events and this season that we're approaching is uh, a significant one. It's yep. the Lenten season. Uh, Ash Wednesday is tomorrow, and uh, we getting we're getting started with uh, our activities. Yep, uh, Ash Wednesday. We, I feel like we say this every time. It's a special service. But Ash Wednesday is one of those ones that's become more significant as I've experienced it more often, and it only happens once a year, so it's a lot more emphasis in my life, I guess. Yeah. Well, what uh, we had hoped to do on Sunday was to kind of uh, give folks an advance on on thinking about right. Ash Wednesday and that process. Uh, I'm still, I think I, I come to that uh, because I'm something of a novice at this, and You're six years in, it counts. Well, and, and, and I'm a procrastinator, and so <laughs> Ash Wednesday comes, boom, and all of a sudden I haven't really thought about what uh, I want my 40 days or so mm-hmm. to, to look like. And so uh, it, I think it helps to be able to think, not just think through that, but be prepared for that. And uh, uh, it gives you, I think, something, a better guide through the process, but yeah, I'm kind of ahead on that this year, which kind of surprised me because normally I'm, I get to Ash Wednesday, I'm like, "What's going on?" And I don't know if it was writing the curriculum for for student ministry or what that got me thinking about it. Pause. Ahead of time. That could be a lot of it, T. That could be a lot of. Been <laughs> doing that since you wrote December. thirteen lessons. So yeah, <laughs> we said that last week, but it's worth mentioning again. So that could be it. <laughs> um, but then I read something last week, um, and it was the the guy talked about fasting and feasting during Mm. Lent, which you don't ever think about feasting, we call it, you can add something to your process for spiritual formation. That's what he calls feasting. And I think he just likes the alliteration there. But I thought it was interesting to think about fasting and feasting that when you take something out, you need to replace it with something um, that builds that relationship with God. Otherwise, it's just removing something and there's really no spiritual formation involved. Right. Well, what I want folks to hear in this conversation is that this this season is significant in in and of itself on its right. own and it's on its own merits and so if you're going to actively engage the season as a part of your own spiritual formation it seems to me you have a couple of options one is and the, the path that most people seem to take is that they do what they've always done mm-hmm. and and there's nothing wrong with that some people have a pattern or a certain thing that still raises their consciousness. So if they're going to fast on Fridays, that's that it raises that level of consciousness. Or uh, no meat on Fridays. However you, however they're right. going to do that. And and those are those are that's one that's uh, that's popularized. But uh, I think the other one is that that and and this here's where you and I kind of jump off into our own direction, where possibly being a novice at this helps us kind yeah. of works to our advantage is that we just continue to learn every year. Right. And, Keep doing. and I think that was my heart coming into this is that uh, for for p- most people in our church, as we've said over the last five or six years, it's not something that we've grown up with so right. that we're, we have this uh, routine or our knowledge of, of what how we want to, to respond to this season for right. our own growth. And uh, so we, we kind of approach it as if everyone's there with us with right. that. I think when you're talking about like growing up with it, I, I think at least in my experience growing up that there was kind of a standoff, stay away from Lent type mentality. 
And for some reason, we become more open to that as we've experienced it and been able to say, this is really good, and this is something that really helps you experience Easter better and Resurrection right. Sunday. And so that's that's been helpful for me. And I think it is because I don't have that tradition. There's so many other things we have tradition built into that maybe shapes us in a bad way. But this is really good because it is fresh to us, and we're able to not have all the, the extra stuff handed in. We're just able to explore and enjoy. Right. Well, and, and probably the bias that we deal with in our uh, faith experience to date is that uh, we're really good. A lot of churches that we've grown up in are really good at celebrating Easter, but they don't really do much leading right. up to Easter. Right. Maybe Palm Sunday, but that's about it. Right. And so I think that's when, when you really look at it, that's the, the big shift that you see, at least in our church and our way of thinking. Mm-hmm. And then we were talking earlier, uh, looking over uh, the the, the, the worship order for tomorrow night. Right. And I, I didn't remember, I had really forgotten that we had that many people participating. Of course, yes. we, we do attendance on that one just like we do on a Sunday morning. Mm-hmm. And so uh, we started that, in all honesty, for these special events right. so that we would know who to get involved right. as far as readers and so forth. And uh, so it's real interesting that uh, to, to see, that particularly also trying to figure out what we should do, if, if how we should, might need to improvise because of all this weather. Right. Uh, but looking back on it, it's uh, regard even with the weather, we're going to have uh, more folks than what we did those first few years. Right. So, yeah. Uh, anyways, it's a it's a fun it's a fun thing to uh, to jump into from our perspective, and I enjoy that with you being a part of the staff with you, where we you know get to talk about this and. Uh, uh, and I, honestly, I you think you lead the way in this conversation. I think, well, I don't know about that. Um, I just like, I like having, being able to discuss it and not be scared of it in a sense. Right. Um, but I also like that those 40 days are a chance to shape um, your habits to create something new also. Um, so last year, and, and I'm kind of like you, I don't talk a lot about what I give up um, during Lent. Um, afterwards, I'm fine with talking about it, but I try not to talk too much about it during Lent. But last year, I gave up Cokes mm. and, or sodas, whatever you call it, depending on where you're at. Um, and to date, haven't had one. Mm. And ha- I've only had one day where I really wanted one. And I probably could have done it, but I was like, nope, I'm going a full year. Mm. And I'm going to get it done. And so tomorrow is a full year. But it's just, it changed what I drink um, as far as that goes. And then it also changed by putting in... Um, Basically, I use specific plans on the Bible app for right. for daily um, meditation. That way it would, because you know it's so easy as a minister to say, well, I was in the Bible today. Well, really all we did was worked on lessons. So yeah, you were in the Bible, but was it for personal spiritual development? So using the plans on the Bible app to send a reminder to say, hey, here's your plan that you're supposed to be on and doing that, that's been great. And that's something that I started back then. And it's been a very consistent part of my life. And then also other people involved in those apps because it's kind of like Facebook where you can have friends go through mm-hmm. it with you and so that's that's kind of what I added or I guess that's what I feasted on whatever and that's that's what I like about this Linton experience is it's not just about getting rid of something because I think early on I thought you're always supposed to give up candy and then the celebration is you get candy on Easter um, that that's back in your life but it's really about like reshaping who you are and what you do well I are you ever that the candy thing reminded me when in my early days in being involved uh, in leading the Linton experience through a church, uh, I remember I gave, I, I, at the time I was eating, I would eat two cookies after supper every night. And uh, that was uh, really something that my, my granddad did. I, I mean, I fall, fell into this habit and then realized later that my granddad did that. That's a good habit. And uh, <laughs> then, uh, so that uh, this particular season came around and uh, Girl Scout cookies tend to go on sale the 1st of February and I'm a big supporter of Mm. Girl Scouts. As well you should be. And so then I've got cookies sitting in the freezer for three months. (laughs) It was, uh, it was a, you know, if if that experience of uh, uh, fasting on something is to be that reminder of that decision, and I did a good job there. (laughs) <laughs> but it was a struggle. Uh, I, but 
And then uh, another one, I'll just one more side note on, on what people give up. It used to drive me crazy in the coffee shop because people would give up caffeine. Oh, yeah, that's frustrating. Yeah. I can see that. So anyways, don't give up caffeine. Just kidding. <laughs> it doesn't bother uh, you now. <laughs> um, yeah, um, I gave up meat one year because I thought that was a good idea, but I'm a person that doesn't like vegetables either. That was a long 40-something days of Lent. Yeah, well, <clears throat> and that and the the mentioning how long it is, that's one of the things that I emphasize a lot. Then, because here's the thing, there's a lot of these uh, experiences we have that are uh, a, an important part of our spiritual formation mm-hmm. that we treat with such a formality and a, a nervousness or there's just, there's something about it. And so, honestly, I feel like my role, whether people accept this or not, is to kind of diffuse that tension or that mm. stiffness right. to that experience and say, let's just, you know, this is real life and this is life with Jesus. Let's mm-hmm. let's do this together. Let's kind of uh, live this experience. And so, and that's why I emphasize a lot that if you, if you decide to feast, I mean, to fast on something from uh, fast with something during that Lenten season and then you break that fast, it just throws people off. Right. And I'm just going, okay, you broke you broke the chain. You start again start tomorrow. Yeah. Uh, or adjust, you know. Right. And, you know, I think the intent of, of what we're trying to accomplish through this uh, 40-day experience is really the, what we need to really focus on. And uh, I, I do think that making wise decisions going into it are helpful to make it a smoother adjustment or a smoother experience. But uh, I'm looking forward to this season in particular because of, uh, something we're doing in our church. You want to tell us about that? Uh, I'm assuming we're talking about the Friday prayer and fasting. You read my mind. Okay, good. So on Fridays from 11.45 a.m. to 1.15 p.m., we're going to open up the worship center for anybody, church member, community member, to come up and spend time uh, in, in prayer. We're also saying that that's probably your lunch hour, and so if you want to fast during that time, any money you would have spent um, on your lunch, you can throw that in a clay pot that we have, and that'll be part of your almsgiving. That's part of Lent also. Um, we're giving all that to the Life House, which helps with um, all kinds of uh, ministries locally here in Sweetwater and helping people. I've been watching that even in this cold snap, they've been helping with getting people into hotel rooms and things like that, um, extending those stays. And so that's part of what that Friday will be. We'll have different stations. People can take communion. Um, there'll be guided prayers they can use. There's all kinds of stuff they'll be able to light a candle. Um, but basically, it's something we've never done before. And we're saying, even if it's just you and me up here on Friday, we'll have it open for prayer yeah. and fasting. Yeah, it, and this whole conversation started with uh, stuff you were sharing with us uh, mm-hmm. in staff about, uh, or maybe it was just with me, about uh, fasting on Fridays mm-hmm. and then giving giving that money to uh, to feed the those who need right. food. And so it's somewhere along there at Escalade. And I will say that we do, Teak and I do have to exercise caution because when it comes to the Lenten season, we're all in. Right. And it's different than, I think, uh, with, than with the Advent season. I mean, because right. everyone's all in for that. Right. Uh, but uh, we really, I've, at least in this relationship and with this church and with you and our conversation about it, it's something that I really check right. before because we can, w- there's a lot of things we would love to do mm-hmm. uh, to uh, to live through this season. Right. So, but uh, it's something that's meaningful to Teak and I, and we believe it's, uh, we've, we've seen uh, a lot of folks that grow through this with us uh, during the time that I've been here. And I'm thankful for those that influenced me during my Crosspoint experience mm-hmm. uh, and really kind of brought a lot of these things to light. So, You know, talking about us being novices at this and our excitement, I think it was only maybe one or two years ago that we realized that Lent's actually 47 days because right. of the Sundays. Right. And so we had to seek out our friends, Strebeck and uh, Jared House, to say, okay, why do we say it's 40 days, but there's 47? And so if you're interested in that, let us know. We'll explain it to you. Yeah, well, the, I'm glad you brought that up because we've talked about having some guests mm-hmm. uh, during this Lenten season. We've done that in the past. Uh, we've reached out to the people at Lifehouse. They'll be joining us Good. here in uh, another week or two, and then we'll get some of these others involved. 
uh, just to join us in this conversation. And mm -hmm. I hope that uh, you'll continue to, to follow along with us. If you are a regular subscriber slash follower, uh, share these podcasts or uh, videos with mm -hmm. others. And uh, let's uh, expand this conversation about what this season means and what it means to each of us as we kind of share uh, our thoughts and, and let God speak to us. So uh, I think we're ready for Sunday. Sunday's message is on the temptation of Jesus. Uh, 40 days in the wilderness and it all starts there and that will lead us into this uh, season and these conversations uh, about Lent. So uh, check your calendar, follow us on Facebook, uh, check out uh, the new groups we have. Yeah, we got two new groups, the, our online uh, campus if you want to call it that and then also our online prayer group. So. We're in finding new ways to engage people uh, that are not uh, ne necessarily even just near our church or a part of our, our church, but uh, others uh, around the, the area that uh, are keep up with us or want to be a part of this ministry. So there's two, two groups. Go to our Facebook page, First Baptist Sweetwater, and then you'll see the opportunity to join those groups, uh, the online church, digital church group, and uh, the prayer group. So we we'll look forward to seeing you there, and we'll be sharing updates uh, through those uh, uh, media posts. Well. We've talked a good bit today mm -hmm. because we're passionate about this and have a good bit to talk about. Y'all stay warm. We look forward to seeing you Sunday, whether it's online or in person. See you then. Mm -hmm.